you know, it, like, it needs to win things and hopefully, um, you know, we can all achieve that together. Once you're a fan of a club, you're a fan for life. This last few years, really good to watch. I mean, it's worth going and watching loads, really, now. A few yards from the ground, a bus depot that typifies the spirit of a city badly hit by recession. Fierce rivalry between the fans of the two Premier League clubs in the city. And for one Wednesday supporter in particular, there are recollections of a time when his loyalties were somewhat divided. Not now. I did, I did at one time, you know, my oldest son, he, he played for Sheffield United, Steve Fort, and a lot of, a lot of fans will know him. You know, a big six foot three lad he were. And, uh, and now I've got my young son, who's an apprentice professional with Sheffield Wednesday. And there's 21 years difference in their age. So at a time of depression, one young man looking optimistically to the future. At this time, especially, I think you need something. There's not a lot of room for Sheffield. I think everybody's trying to bring them down, everything they try and do. All right, we had student games and all that, but everybody put it down to me. You know, they don't give them any credit for anything they do. So, I mean, we've got two teams in, in first division, so that can't be a bad thing, and it's good. You know, they're going into Europe and that. So it's going to be a good thing for Sheffield, that. I think in the 60s, around the 60s, they started spending money on ground, but they weren't, they didn't put money into the team, to me. And the team were mediocre, but ground, but it's, for that time, but, uh, it was a good ground, but they haven't got a team to match. Well, now, nah, They've got a good, a pretty good team together, and ground's coming up with team. Alan missed that Rumbelows final in 1991, but 25 years earlier, he had been at Wembley to see the FA Cup final defeat by Everton. A great day, despite the result. The year I left school and all, and started to work, and they got two goals in front, you know, and I thought, that's it now. And then they scored, they changed totally when they start, stopped playing. They thought they got it won, and they just like, passing it about, so they keep going forward. And I think they'd have won it. If they'd have kept playing like that, they'd have won it, but to be achievement were good enough. I mean, they got a right exception when they come back. As the Oldham match nears, will Wednesday give them the chop? Preparations for guests and VIPs are all nearing completion in the two hospitality suites. And plans for the visit of Kaiserslautern are also under review. But if you think that players are under pressure, how do you fancy being a chef? Chestnut and I'm a Sheffield United supporter. Basically, keep work and pleasure separate. You know, but everybody knows that here and, you know, um, my job's important to me on that side of it anyway, but, uh, yeah, my allegiances are towards the other side of the city, through there. We do forgive people their small indiscretions every so often, so he's a good chef. One man, though, who is not remembered with affection is the former manager, Ron Atkinson. After swearing undying loyalty to Hillsborough, his move to Villa Park still causes a great deal of ill feeling in one half of Sheffield. Atkinson said the travelling from the Midlands was too much for him. The fans say he put money above loyalty. His face is even blacked out at the bus depot canteen. But one of his biggest supporters is his successor, Trevor Francis. One criticism that's always been levelled at Sheffield Wednesday uh, prior to me coming here was that they were a big club, but they were never, ever ambitious enough. And I think that, um, you know, they've got a lot to thank Ron Atkinson for because he came in with his flamboyant style and decided that he was going to change things. Started bringing bigger names into the club, started to pay uh, bigger salaries, also uh, bigger transfer fees. And I've taken that on since I've, uh, you know, taken over from Ron. It was only, what was it, 16, 17 months ago when I signed Chris Woods that it was the first time ever that they had spent a million pound on a player. We spent uh, big money on other players. So there has been a, you know, a, a significant transformation in, in the, uh, the style of uh, you know, directorship uh, from, the, from behind the scenes in the last three or four years. And obviously Sheffield Wednesday is definitely on the up. Can you tell me how Sheffield Wednesday got its name? Uh, no, and I can't talk about He uh, and you will find out after the break.
even when you play for a club called Wednesday, the day that matters is Saturday. You feeling better? <laughs> a lot better, yeah. Hopefully I will be, yeah. When I was younger, you know, I used to get pumped up before the game, like six, seven hours before a match, you know, or thinking about it all night. And what you do is uh, you just learn to cope with it, you know. You think about the match, obviously what you're going to do in the match, but uh, more or less just uh, at 1.30 we usually have the team talk and all that and go over what they're going to do and what our strengths are, and uh, that's when you really start kicking in. You really got to prepare yourself uh, physically and mentally at the same time. It's... Uh, you got to be a professional about it, you know. You know what's ahead of you, and you know what you're doing. Um, you just got to come in and try. I try to get as much rest as possible. Uh, flying back on the flight and uh, just looking forward to uh, today's game. And uh, you know, you just got to build yourself up and make sure you play that another 90 minutes. The people here, I mean, the most friendliest people I've, I've been around really since in my hometown. <laughs> but uh, they have to me very well. Um, Good support. Uh, it's really nice, nice people. Really friendly. The American lifestyle is a lot different than the English, and but I've been, you know, accepted pretty well. And uh, you know, once you, once you show that you, that you can play football and you want to really give it a go, you know, they accept it. John Hart's boots are on number eleven, which is just at the back there. He's got all his four pair of trainers there and his boots. Uh, some of the younger players, they have to clean all the boots, uh, get all the mud out, ready for, ready for all the games. On the number 48 there, we've got the boss on there, and that is Trevor Fantis, of course. Uh, when Ron Atkinson was here, he had that one as well. And as you can see, he's got very big feet, Trevor Francis. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, we did.